candidate download receive that in the name of Jesus you too shall stand you shall stand The name in the name of, of Jesus we have gathered in this place so father come and do what only you can do in our lives oh God come and speak to us oh God let heaven yes be opened over every one of us oh God let your will be fulfilled in this moment this afternoon in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord let your name be hallowed in this place oh God in the name of Jesus because you are Adonai you are Elohim you are Elion. You are the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You reign forevermore. There is no one else can be compared with you. Jesus, we lift your name. Jesus, we glorify your name. Jesus, we worship your name. Jesus, we give you adoration. Yes, you are God. You are our King. You are our Savior. You are our Redeemer. We bless your name and we glorify your holy name, Jesus. Yes, it's all about about you oh god this moment it's all about you in our service it's all about you jesus this afternoon yes may you be exalted may you be lifted in this moment in the name of jesus yes god be glorified be magnified oh god in the name of Jesus, Seradayana Basanda, Rikando Zadiza Dayabahande, Yes, Saradesh Sataya Bahando, Yes, King of Glory, we give you praise. We give you glory, Jesus, Saradayana Basanda. Yes, God, yes, Lord, be exalted, be magnified in this place, oh God. In the name of Jesus, Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we give you praise, God. We give you praise, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'll be worshiping. All of the days of my life, I'll be lifting hands, even when it's not easy. I'll be worshiping. All of the days, all of the days of my life, I'll be worshiping. All of the days of my life, I will be here. I'll be oh, worshiping. All of the days, sing all of the days of my life in your presence, Lord. I'll be lifting hands, even when it's not easy. I will be here, I'll be here, worshiping, worshiping. All of the days of my life, all of the days of my life, I will be here in your presence, lifting hands, even when it's not easy. Oh, sing. I'll be here, I'll be here, worshiping. Life, all of the days of my life, I will be here, lifting hands. Oh, the way it is. Sing. I'll be here, I'll be here, worshiping. Oh, I'll be 
I'll be here in your presence all of the days of my life all of the days of my life I'll be here oh Jesus in your presence lifting hands oh even when he one more time tell him I'll be here in your presence I'll be here oh worship all of the days of my life I'll be here Lifting hands, oh, even when, even when it's and easy, we are standing before the King, the one who deserves our worship. Hallelujah! Can you lift us in this afternoon? Even those who are watching, wherever you are watching, this is the moment of Jesus. We are standing. We have taken this moment to worship Him to glorify him hallelujah for what he did for us hallelujah he became a sin for us he became a savior to the world he became an answer to the world he is the king of kings who deserve our worship he was given a name that is above every other name come on lift up your voice to him and just take this moment and give him what he deserves he deserves our worship he deserves our worship He's our King. He's our Master. Jesus, we worship. Jesus, we are standing here and worship. Yes, we adore you. We adore you, Jesus. We adore you, Jesus. We exalt you, Jesus. We magnify your name. We glorify your name. You are the King of Kings. You are highly lifted. You are highly exalted. There is no one else like you, Jesus. Come on, lift up your voice, exalt the name of Jesus. He's our Redeemer. He's our Savior. He deserves our worship. He's holy. Jesus, it's all about you. Jesus, we lift our voice in worship, glorifying your name. Oh, oh, Sharia Nava Santa Nava Siate, you are Jesus, my healer, my savior, my redeemer. That's why I worship your name.
all of us sing to him sifa zetu katika kuabudu nafasi hii toaomba bwana upokee zote heshima na sifa na shukrani in jesus mighty name we pray clap your hands and bless the lord hallelujah glad to see you this lunch our service and you may be seated thank you so very much glory to god in the highest praise the lord we want to thank god for each one of us this this day of the lord and this new week you're welcome into the house of god to this lunch our service we believe the holy spirit will minister to each one of us to be built up 
and we will understand his ways because he's a good God. Do you have an expectation? I'm asking you, do you have an expectation? Amen. Um, let's begin a matter and especially now after the resurrection of Christ and the Passover celebrations, we will read scriptures in Luke chapter 24, verse 36, as we welcome those on Facebook and those watching on Elevate TV. The Bible says, now as they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said to them, peace to you. But they were terrified and frightened and supposed they had seen a spirit. And he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do, you, why do doubts arise in your hearts? Behold my hands and my feet. That is, I myself. And it is I myself. Handle me and see. For a spirit does not have flesh and bones. As you see, I have. Now, here you notice Jesus rose from the dead. Now he's begun to appear to his disciples. In another account, Thomas was not believing. And now Jesus saying, Behold my hands and my feet. Look at them. Verse 40. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they still did not believe, for joy and marveled, said to them, Have you any food here? So they gave him a piece of a boiled fish and some honeycomb. And he took it and ate in their presence. This was a real proof. He showing himself alive that this is true. I want to, therefore, begin to show us, now that he has risen from the dead, so what is the way forward for the believers and for the church? After resurrection, uh, so what? Uh, but I'll be laboring to show that Christ is the believer's stability. We are stable because of Christ. Without Christ, we wouldn't stand. Verse 44, I want us to read a couple of verses. The Bible says, then he said to them, these are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. And he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. Then he said to them, Thus it is written, thus it, is, it was necessary for Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And you are witnesses of these things. Behold, verse 20, I mean 49, I send the promise of the Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with a power from on high. Praise the Lord. Okay, there are only about four verses remaining in that chapter. Let's read verse 50 and he led them out as far as Bethany and lifted up his hands and blessed them. And now it came to pass while he blessed them that he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. They worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple praising and blessing God. Amen. So by that Jesus has finished his assignment. And now, according to the writer uh, of this book of Luke, Luke himself, 
he concludes how Jesus taken up into heavens and they returned to Jerusalem with joy and continued the temple. Now, you can see that particularly verse 44 is what I want to concentrate on in this story after resurrection. Jesus is saying all these things that have happened uh, the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you. Now, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law and of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. What is written in the law? What is the law here? The law is the five books of Moses. What Moses said, this is the law. Of course, the prophets, most of the prophets, they spoke something about Christ. And of course, the book of Psalms. These were the scriptures. Remember, in the early church, when Peter, John, and others began to preach, they were preaching from these scriptures, from the law, the prophets, and the Psalms, because there wasn't in the New Testament. And so all that happened to Jesus was written in scripture before and when it happened it became the fulfillment of the word of God. Somebody say the fulfillment of scripture. Now so the church of Christ now let me uh, just pressing into this matter. Which church did Jesus leave when he went up to heaven? From this story, um, is there a church he left? He actually just left 11 scared disciples because Judas had just committed suicide. The day of Pentecost had not come, so they had not replaced Judas with Matthias. So this was just 11, Mary, mother of Jesus, and several other women who are supporting Christ's ministry. It was a small group of people. And Jesus, uh, you know, has risen from the dead. They have joy, celebration. How many of you know how many days Jesus was on the earth after resurrection? 40 days. Now, Acts chapter 1 explains a little bit more. Let me lay the foundation today. Uh, the former account I wrote, or I made, all the feelers of all that Jesus began to do and to teach. The former account is the book of Luke. He's now writing the book of Acts. He's telling the governor, the who was one of the leaders who also wanted or needed to know the things concerning Christ. So he writes this book of Acts to, as a letter and a historic account of the early beginnings of the church. He says, so what Jesus began to both do and teach until the day in which he was taken up after he, through the Holy Spirit, had given commandments to the apostles whom he had chosen. What commandments are these? What commandments did Jesus give after he rose from the dead? Is what we call the Great Commission. Mark 28 saying, verses 19, Go, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And, you know, lo, I will be with you, uh, teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you, and lo, I will be with you always. So, in these 40 days, after resurrection, see, Sunday, you record resurrection. So if it was AD 33, we would just be talking about the things that happened the other day, you know, and asking one another, are you the only one in Jerusalem who does not know the things that happened? Are we together? In fact, in this Luke 24 is where we have the story on the road to a mouse, two men, you know, he joined two men who are walking, and the story shows up. So in this time, 40 days when he rose from the dead, he was busy giving 
the great commission. What you call the great commission. In Mark 16, it says, go preach the gospel, verse 15, to all creatures. You know, take this message to all creation. And whoever believes and is baptized shall be saved. Whoever believes not shall be damned. And these sons shall follow them that believe. So, he gave the commission. Back to Luke. Uh, in Luke 24, where we are reading, he now uh, is manifesting and showing himself among, you know, the disciples and believers. And he's telling them, all that have happened to me is what I told you in the scriptures before. Amen. Or he stands in the Psalms 16 and verse 10. This is what scripture had said. For you will not leave my soul in shoal, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. This was a psalm of David that is actually pointing to what happens to the Messiah. You will not leave my soul in hell. That's why he rose from the dead. Psalms 22 verse 1. Mess, you know, David cries out like Messiah. He says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me and from the words of my groaning? The psalmist is speaking this many years before Jesus literally goes to the cross. He's saying, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So all that has happened to Christ is what was written and the fulfillment is what we see with the Passover. By the way, this whole life and message of Christ becomes our foundation and our stability in this. That if we have anything God has said to us before, it will be fulfilled. Glory to God. It will be fulfilled. If you study Christ and his life, you will see right from birth, even before birth, Prophets spoke where he was to be born, which city, and so forth. You remember? Mika saying, Ephrata, a little village, uh, you who are small, but out of you shall come forth the king. Glory to God. And so, concerning his death and resurrection, it was all spoken by the prophets and the Psalms and also in the law. Praise God. Now, look at Isaiah 53, for instance. It says, Who has believed our report and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Verse 2, For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He has no form or comeliness. And when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire of him. Of course, when he was on the cross and you looked at how he was disfigured beaten up and completely destroyed, you know, uh, completely messed up. When you looked at him, there was nothing you would have desired. That's what that verse is saying. But look at what Isaiah says in verse 3. He is despised and rejected by men. That is like in the present tense. He is despised and rejected by men. And Isaiah is speaking 700 years before. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we Heed, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. Verse 4, surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Before even it happens, he has already carried our griefs. He has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. We didn't yet esteem him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. The next verse says, but he was wounded for our transgressions. Isaiah is speaking like his past. He was bruised for iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, look, we are healed. It's like it's already done. We are healed. I like the prophet. <laughs> Praise God. This is how we need to treat scripture. When you know what God says concerning the season, the situation, and where you are, and the Holy Spirit highlights a verse and brings the word to you, you need to hold it deeply. You need to believe it. You need to hang on it. It's our anchor. It's our hope. It's our survival. 
is our future, is our way forward. And I put it to you, Christ and his word is our stability and our way forward. Because systems fail, governments fail, men will fail you, but God will never fail you. How many of you believe God will never fail you? Praise the name of Jesus. So back in Luke, he says, so these are the words which I spoke to you when I was still with you, uh, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms. Then the Bible says, and he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. Praise God. Now, so if our understanding is opened and we understand scriptures, which is the word of God, you see, two scriptures. John 1.1 1, 1 says, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was was God. Somebody say the word. Verse 2. He was in the beginning. With God. So Christ. Is this word. He is God. He has a final say. His word. Is complete. Forever settled. His word. There is no dispute. There is no argument. Concerning what he said. That's why whatever had been said of Christ. Was fulfilled. So today we can find Christ, the word, inside our life. This is our stability. Glory to God. So, the scriptures therefore says, after this, if you look at verse 46 of Luke 24, then he said to them, it is written and thus it was necessary for Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. Some of it is written. So all that happened of Christ is something that was written. What will happen to us is what is written. We need to find what is written and hang ourselves along or believe, lay hold of, you know, and uh, rely and depend and put our trust on what is written. Because what is written, God, watches over his word to fulfill it. Glory to God. You should not be walking around in the city without a word from God. You hear what I say? You should have a word for your life. You should have a word for your situation. Because by that word, you will stand. So, here, everything that was written and was said concerning Christ, Needed to suffer. Then the third day, raise or rise from the dead. Look at that. Verse 47. And that. So after rising from the dead, this is what should follow. That repentance and forgiveness of sins should be preached in his name to all nations. Somebody say preached. What is preached is the word now should be proclaimed. Christ should be preached. The nations should be told about Christ. The nations should be told about the word. The content, the beginning point should be repentance, turning, changing your thinking and your heart, changing direction and forgiveness of sins that God through Christ he paid the ultimate price on the cross, poured his blood, which is for our forgiveness. This message should be preached. So what should follow is this. The preaching of the gospel is what produces our stability as believers. We need to hear the gospel. We need to hear the word proclaimed because hereafter, after he's risen from the dead, all the church needs now is to hear the message. To hear the message. Which message? Of Christ. Now let me show you two examples quickly. Because. 
God has chosen a foolish method called preaching the gospel to establish the world. Do you hear what I say? Yani, God just decided preaching the gospel is what is going to change nations. Since Kenya began to hear the gospel 150 years ago, the gospel has changed this nation. Yeah. Ata hii maandeleo yote ililetwa kwa sababu missionaries walileta injili. Glory to God. Now, go to 1 Corinthians 15 verse 1. Bible says Moreover brethren I declare to you what the gospel which I preached to you which also you received in which you stand wow how do we stand by the gospel preached to us amen the constant message of Christ that you hear is your stability. That's why we come for lunch hours as many times as possible. Tuseme, mbona nisikuje tu once na inatosha? Once a year. Oh, I come during Christmas, I come during Passover, see you next year. No, 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 no. We stand by the word we constantly hear. Because I tell you what, we are living in a world where there's so many things like storms and floods and information and attacks and all manner of competitive spiritual warfare that is always coming against us. That's why we constantly must hear the gospel of Christ, receive it. By that gospel will stand. That's why somebody sang the song and said, because he lives. I can face tomorrow. Hallelujah. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. So, by the preaching of the gospel, by this gospel, we stand and look at verse 2. It says, by which also you are saved. You are safe. You have peace. You have wholeness. You have completeness. You have deliverance. You have forgiveness of sin. By this gospel, you are saved. If you hold fast that word which I preached to you. Wow. So we not only believe, but we must hold on to that word. Glory to God. Unless you believed in vain. Now, look at that. That word he preached in the next verse. The Bible says in verse 4, uh, no, 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 verse, verse 3. For I deliver to you, first of all, that which I also received. What is this that he received? This is a message that Christ died for our sins. That's a straightforward foundation for the church that and how did he do that according to the scriptures according to what the, the prophets had said according to what the psalmist had said according to what the prophets said according to the scriptures Christ died for our sins that tells me there is no sin so big that God cannot handle this is the greatest message to the world hallelujah so he died. Number two, verse four. That, and that he was buried. And that he rose again the third day again according to the scriptures. So what should be preached after resurrection? This, that Christ died for our sins. He was buried on the third day. What happened? He rose from the dead. I don't know why we, Christianity is not complicated. It's simply believing this word about Jesus. That's how our future looks like. That's our way forward. That's our foundation. It's our present life. Glory to God. And we must receive, believe, receive, embrace that word of what Jesus did for us. 
So, let's trace when Paul went preaching. Here he's telling Corinthians, that's what he preached to them. Let's go to Thessalonica, Acts chapter 17 and verse 1, and see wherever the apostles went, this was the foundation. Now, when they had passed through the uh, Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where there was a synagogue of the Jews. Verse 2. Then Paul, as his custom was, went into them for three Sabbaths. These are three weeks, right? This Saturday, the other Saturday. Reasoned with them from where? From the scriptures. So, they are in the Salonica for the first time. And now he goes to where the Jews synagogues are. We would say like into the place of worship. Verse 3. What was his message? Explaining and demonstrating what? That Christ had to suffer and rise from the dead and say in his message, what was he saying? This Jesus whom I preach to you is the Christ. Glory to God. I, I just feel very quickly there by the Holy Spirit that every believer should have this thing, this word, this revelation in your fingertips. May your eyes open and grasp this revelation. This is what will help you to stand. Glory to God. That Christ, <laughs> you know, suffered rose from the dead and this Jesus is the Christ. What happened when he did that in the Salonica verse 4? And some of them were persuaded and a great multitude of the devout Greeks and not a few of the leading women. They joined Paul and Cyrus. I like it the way uh, the women and they hear the gospel. They are like you women who are here, to quickly receive it. Brothers, we think over it overnight, but tomorrow we also receive it. I don't know how we come then end up leading you, and you are the first ones who went to the cross and saw that Jesus actually resurrected. You are the first witnesses. The first woman, the first person to witness the resurrection was a woman. And Peter was hesitant, though he came running a little later, if you remember the Jesus movie. <laughs> Oh my God. Now, there was a lot of commotion in chapter 17. That's not something we need to follow. I am just trying to show you when he went to the Salonica, the message was the same. Death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ. The preaching of that word, when you hear it, you believe, you embrace it, glory to God, then you are saved, forgiven, washed by the blood, by that gospel, then you stand. So Christ is our believer's stability. Without Christ, we have no church. Any congregation of God's people that does not emphasize Christ, then it's taken another form. You hear what I say? That's why we appreciate songs like these, when someone said, uh, Jesus, you are the center of it all. Amen. You are the center of the church. Everything revolves around you. It's what we call Christ-centric. Glory to God. Christ is our hope. Christ is our stability. Christ, the message of Christ is everything. That's why any church, any family, any believer that's Re receives or appreciates the revelation, this simple revelation of Christ and how he died and how he rose from the dead and how he is alive today. That church, it doesn't matter, that family, it doesn't matter how many waves and storms will come against even that community, the people of God will thrive. Oh yes, the people of God will thrive. Even if there came up a powerful government and said no preaching. As long as there are people who have Christ in their lives. And they believe that word. They will still survive. 
And we have stories, of course, in nations that persecute Christianity, like China and other places. The church in China, in fact, the believers in China are more than all the population of Kenya. You to China, Monagata. Glory to God. I want you to notice that in Luke 24, verse 48, he says to the disciples, and you are witnesses of these things. Verse 48. You are witnesses of these things. So, the verse before had said, repentance and forgiveness of sins should be preached to the whole world, but now you disciples... You are witnesses of these things. I want to ask you, are you a witness today in the 21st century? Can you join the witnesses today that it's true Jesus Christ came, died for our sins, rose from the dead, and three days he rose, now he's alive. Glory to God. I read a scripture here on Sunday, a prophetic scripture by one of the prophets, Hosea, huh? concerning this matter. Look at Hosea chapter 6 verse 1. The Bible says, God, I mean, come, let us return to the Lord. For he has torn, but he will heal us. He has stricken, but he will bind us up. That's two. After two days, he will revive us. After how many days? Prophet, Haggai, I mean Hosea, you are saying God will revive us after two days. Which two days? Peter, the apostle said, to the Lord one day is like a thousand years. And one thousand years, like one day. Alright, so since Jesus was here, I think two days are over. Because we already passed 2,000 years. Hello? Okay. Let me help the, the rest of you who are not engineers and mathematicians. If you pick that formula of 1,000 years is one day, you can calculate how many seconds you have lived. Umeshika ama utashika kesho? Umeshika sai? You need to calculate and find out how many minutes uh, you have lived on the earth. If you are 40, hey. a thousand years, one day. So a thousand years, 24 hours. 40 years is how many hours times 24? So divide by the 24, multiply by a thousand. You'll see how many hours you have lived. Then divide by 60. Wengine hata mjafika dakika tano bado mko hapa. Oh Lord. So after two days he will revive us. What is to revive? Is to bring us back into the fall, is to breathe freshness and life. Look at what the Bible says. On the third day he will raise us up that we may live in his sight. I think we are in the third day. Yeah. 1,000 years to Limariza. 2,000 is Gaisha 23 years ago. I said 22 years ago. We are on the 23rd year of the third day. This is the time, if I use that message of Hosea, this is the time to live in his sight, in his presence. Glory to God. I like preachers because some of them they pick names like this and they create a name. So third day ministries, you know, that's a good name for your church. Third day church. I know third day chapel. God bless them. Huh? Third day enterprises. You know, open your eyes and do something. If you have a business that has a name from the Bible, it becomes easier to pray for it. Instead of the other one, you have cut the name of your wife into half and the name of the husband into half, then you say enterprises. 
you Kenyans. <laughs> what is your name? Elizabeth. What is his name? Peter. So Elipit. Elipit Enterprises. Wa well, Kenya surely. Let's think a little bit deeper. Sorry, I'm just in case your business actually is majina enu. Uh, just continue with it. But we can start another one. Third day limited. Glory to God. And establish values. And you say in three days, we will have sorted out your case. And we always keep our time. <laughs> Hallelujah. We need to enjoy ourselves in the house of God. As our eyes are open and have understanding. You know, one time I did, just those statements I'm making right here. And somebody decided to pick one of the things and say, and made it a business. And made a lot of money. Because it was already anointed. So, let me say something that I'll pick up tomorrow. Verse 49 of this Luke 24. We now appreciate he is alive. Behold, this is the next thing. I send the promise of my father upon you. In other words, see, I'm ready to send the promise of my father upon you. We need to investigate what promise is that. Then he says, but there must be a, a dimension of preparation and waiting before that promise hits the ground run. Jesus is saying, in a nutshell, I'm about to birth the church. I'm about to birth a movement. I'm about to birth a community of people, a Jesus generation, and what is going to birth them is the promise of the Father. Is the promise of the Father. But wait for that promise. So tomorrow, we'll begin looking at that. For instance, go to John 16 verse 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. This is Jesus saying. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. Somebody said we have an advantage. Wow. So, I think I've laid a good foundation. Tomorrow I'm going to look at this promise of the Father. Because the Holy Spirit gave me a word the other day. I want to pursue that in a couple of weeks. Even in our services. I believe God for the move of the Holy Spirit. Because when God gives a word. He gives a word for a reason. and For a purpose. There are some people he wants to stretch out his hand. And they pick from where they are. Glory to God. The church. Hey. That I don't leave you in suspense. Because this is not drama. Movie. No movies end at the wrong place. Go to Acts chapter 2 verse 1. When the day of Pentecost had fully come. They were all. They were all with one accord in one place. They had been told to wait. Glory to God. But now they are waiting here in the upper room. Verse 2. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven. Over, as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Verse 3. And there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire and one sat upon each one of them. Verse 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began, 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 began. They are not doing it before. They just began. To speak in other tongues. How? As the Spirit gave them a trance. Let's read finally that same Luke 24 verse 49 in NIV. Then we close. Behold, I send the promise of the Father to you. He says, I am going to send you 
what my father has promised. But stay in the city until you have been clothed with the power from on high. Somebody say my clothing is changing. Yeah, we need to be clothed. Not with other clothes. We need to be clothed from heaven. There is something called the power of God that clothes believers so that believers can be stable. we together. We're going to pick this tomorrow. Did you receive anything? Let's stand up and pray. Don't forget Jesus Christ and all he said is your hope, is your future, is your stability, is what makes the church without Christ's words. That's why Paul said we preach Christ and him crucified. Glory to God. Stretch your hand to heaven as I pray. Father, we thank you for the minister of the word. We look forward for you opening our eyes and giving us an understanding so that, Lord, if we can see it, it will be printed in our hearts and in our lives. Jesus Christ, how you came, you died, you were buried, and you rose from the dead. This is like the third day, indeed, the day of the Lord. When you say it, we need to wait for this advantage. We need to be clothed with the power from on high. I pray for the church and God's people that are hearing me. Lord, now that Passover is over, get us into the next dimension of the anointing as is recorded in the scriptures. Our lives will never, never, never be the same again. We are grateful that we are in Christ. And I pray for somebody who is not in Christ. May the message and the word we have heard that forgiveness of sin is available. May they turn their hearts and their lives to Christ. I release the blessing of God the Father upon every hearer today. May this word remain in our hearts, giving us a strong foundation. Because it's a foundation for Christianity. We thank you and honor you. And even fathers, we come to the end now. And even receive an offering or give. I ask that the blessing of the Lord will be stretched out mightily. Even upon God's people. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Celebrate God. He is good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's give our offering. We're grateful that you came. Wow. Just like we hear the word every day, we also give every day because God is the one who provides for us every day. If you need provision, may the Lord do it for you in Jesus' name. God will never fail you nor forsake you. Enjoy your afternoon. God bless you. Drop your offering there. Drop your offering there. Those of you who are online, go ahead and use the details on the screen. Uh, on the program you're watching and the Lord bless you. Thank you very much. Amen. <laughs>